Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. In today's video, it's time for a deck tech on one of my favorite legacy decks, Manalus Dredge. If you want to get into legacy, this is by far the best option. I have a video explaining why, so I put a card right here so you can check that out before watching this video to learn more how it works in depth, or maybe you could watch the video after, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm going to explain each card in this deck and also how the deck functions and how is it different from regular dredge because obviously mana less dredge doesn't play any lands it's mana less doesn't even play mana generating cards doesn't play dark ritual or lotus petal or lion's eye diamond none of that it has zero mana but yet it still casts certain cards and it's still incredibly powerful and can win as soon as turn two and why am i doing another deck tech instead of doing a deck list update because i've done a deck tech on this uh, a year and a half ago a uh, year and a half, two years ago. It's because the strategy has changed quite a lot with new additions from Modern Horizons 2. And uh, the list has changed a lot, as well as the sideboard. So now I want to talk about uh, what are the changes and also uh, how the deck functions with those cards. So let's get right into it with the dredgers. Obviously, you're playing a dredge deck, so you want to have a lot of dredgers. And the best one is by far Go Gary Grave Troll. It's 5 mana, 0, 0, enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each creature card in your graveyard. And can pay 1, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from it to regenerate it, but we're never going to do that. Uh, and it has dredge 6, which is what matters. So dredge is a re replacement effect for drawing a card. Let's say Golgari Grave Troll is in your graveyard and you were to draw a card. Not necessarily the card you draw on your turn, uh, on your draw step, but any draw. Instead of drawing that card, you can put Golgari Grave Troll back into your hand and then put the top 6 cards of your deck into your graveyard. And that's great in this deck because our graveyard is essentially an extension of our hand. Cards do more in our graveyard than our hand. So Dredge 6 might as well be draw 6 in this deck. So we have 4 copies of the Grave Troll. And also, uh, if we return it from the graveyard to the battlefield, it will be huge because since we dredge so much and we, our deck is filled with creatures... Uh, Golgari Grave Troll is going to be gigantic when it comes into play. Uh, next is Stinkweed Imp, which is a dredge 5, so not as good as Golgari Grave Troll. Uh, it's 3 mana for 1-2 flying with Death Touch, death touch essentially, but it triggers. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a creature, you destroy that creature. Doesn't really matter, We're, we mostly care about the dredge 5. So we have 4 of that. We also have 4 of uh, our good old friend uh, Golgari Thug. Uh, this is 2 mana 1-1, one, one. when it's put into a graveyard from play, put target creature card in your graveyard on top of your library. This is also something that doesn't really matter. We just care about it because it's a dredger, it has dredge 4, so not as good as troll and stink with him, but that's the third best option. And the fourth best option is shambling shell, which is only dredge 3, so that's why we only play one copy. I used to play 3 or sometimes even 4 in my manalist dredge deck, but now we have so many new cards in this deck that uh, I had to uh, trim down some cards, and Shambling Shell was one of them. I, I hate to cut dredgers in a dredge deck, but this one is really bad. It's really kind of a last resort uh, dredger. In case you don't have any of those, you go for Shambling Shell. Normally, you really want to dredge Golgari Grave Troll as much as possible, because dredge 6 is just so much better than uh, anything else. And then Stink with him. those are the two cards you really want to dredge. Golgari Thug is really that last resort kind of, uh, okay, we don't have either Troll or uh, Stink with Imp, but it's still fine. And Shambling Shell is really like you're desperate to have a dredger. Uh, but with 13 dredgers in total, we should be fine most of the time. And with all those dredgers, we want cards that bring, um, come back from the battlefield. So we have recursive creatures like Nether Shadow, which is black black for a 1-1 one -one with uh, essentially haste. And when it is in your graveyard with three creatures above it, you can return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. And by above it, uh, this is a mistake I've done in the past, above doesn't mean on that came in the graveyard before the Nether Shadow, it means it came in the graveyard after the Nether Shadow. So let's say you have Nether Shadow in the graveyard, and then later on in the game you dredged uh, Golgari Grave Troll, and you milled Stink with him, Golgari Tug, and Shamley Shell. You have three creatures that came in the graveyard after Nether Shadow, so it can come back into play on your upkeep. Uh, I know that's really weird, but in Legacy you cannot rearrange the order of your graveyard if you have cards like Nether Shadow in your deck. 
So that's just kind of a different rule from modern uh, than legacy. This is not something that would be uh, allowed in modern play. But here we are. You cannot rearrange the order of cards in your graveyard, which can be a problem sometimes if you have a big graveyard and you want to uh, rearrange it to kind of sort the cards that matter and the cards that don't. Uh, next, we have four copies of Icarid, which is another recursive threat that comes back on the upkeep. Just remember that you need to do your triggers before you dredge or you draw your card because otherwise you cannot go back, especially in competitive tournaments. Uh, you will not be allow allowed to bring back your creatures. This is a 3-1 with haste. And at the beginning of the end step, you have to sacrifice it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if it's in your graveyard, you can exile a black creature card other than Icarid from your graveyard to bring it back. Just note that it doesn't mean um, not exiling itself. It means not exiling Icarid. So let's say you have Icarid and another Icarid. You cannot say, I'll bring back Icarid, exiling the other Icarid. You have to exile something like another Shadow, uh, Stink With Him, Golgari Thug. But you don't want to exile those creatures. We have other creatures that don't matter when they are in the graveyard that I'm going to talk about later. But this is a really good recursive threat. 3-1 with haste. It deals three, deals 3 damage every single turn. And you'll have plenty of black creatures to exile to it. Uh, next we have 4 copies of Prize Amalgam, which is um, a 3-3 three, three, whenever a creature enters the battlefield. If it entered from your graveyard, or you cast it from your graveyard, you can return Prize Amalgam from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. Another recursive card, but this one you don't have to sacrifice at the end step. And what's so good about Prize Amalgam is you have so many cards that come back from the graveyard that even if Prize Amalgam gets destroyed or the opponent has a wrath effect, uh, you can bring back creatures and then it will snowball very quickly because your prize amalgams will come back. Just note that uh, when prize amalgam triggers from a creature, it's still in the graveyard. It's not uh, exiled, so it will still count for, let's say, Golgari Grave Troll. It uh, doesn't really matter, but still something that uh, I learned the hard way. Uh, Icarid also triggers prize amalgam every single turn. Same thing with Nether Shadow. So prize amalgam is also incredibly uh, resilient. We have four copies of prize the amalgam. Now we have four copies of Phantasmagorian, which is the glue that holds this deck together. It's a 7 mana 6 6, but we're never going to cast it. Uh, when you play it, any player may discard three cards. If a player does, counter Phantasmagorian. Doesn't matter at all. What we care about is the uh, activated ability. Discard three cards, return Phantasmagorian from your graveyard to your hand. This is absolutely insane because um, in Manalus Dredge, we don't have any lands, so how are we going to get the cards in our graveyard? We do that by discarding cards to hand size on turn 1. Um, so uh, we're always going to let our opponent begin the game. We're always going to be on the draw. Um, unless it's game 2 or 3 and the opponent decides to let us play first. But sometimes most opponents are too uh, hard-headed to, um, to let us go first. Because they think that it's better for them to be on the play. Uh, and that's not the case. But let's say we have 7 cards in the opening hand, which will be 99% of games because you almost never mulligan in this deck. And we have Phantasmagorian in hand. On our turn 2 or turn 1, we will draw a card. Now we're up to 8 cards. Move to this card step, we'll discard Phantasmagorian. It's in our graveyard. And then we will activate it, uh, discard 3 cards to return it to our opening hand. Discarding stuff that we would much rather have in the graveyard than in our hand, like the dredgers, recursive threats, and other cards I'm going to talk about. Um, and then in response to that ability, we can activate it again by discarding three cards because Phantasmagorian is still in our graveyard since the ability is on the stack. But this, the discard three cards is part of the cost. So you can do it twice. And it will technically, uh, the second ability will resolve first, will go back to your hand. And then the second one, uh, the first one, the original one, will resolve, but there is no Phantasmagorian in your graveyard, so it does nothing. But you still already paid the cost, paid the cost of discarding three cards. So you can discard six cards with that. Uh, so you only have one card left in your hand. Uh, and that's really good. And also later on in the game, if you dredge it or you have some uh, Phantasmagorians in your graveyard and you've dredged a lot of Golgari Thugs or Stinkweed Imps, you will have a handful of dredgers because you replace all your draws with dredges. And when you dredge a card, it goes back to your hand. So if you want dredgers back in your graveyard, you can activate Phantasmagorian, discard them, and then later on you'll be able to uh, continue with your dredging. So Phantasmagorian is definitely the glue that holds this deck together. Uh, if you don't have it in your opening hand, it's no big deal. You can still just discard a dredger, but it will be much slower. And um, you'll have a chance of missing your second dredge. Let's say you discard a Stinkweed Imp. 
you dredge five and out of your five cards you dredge there are no other dredgers now you're stuck in a situation where you don't know how to fill up your graveyard unless you keep drawing cards and then eventually find more dredgers to discard the hand size uh, next we have four copies of bridge from below which is three black mana for an enchantment Whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from play, if Bridge from Below is in your graveyard, you make a 2-2 black zombie. And uh, when a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from play, if Bridge from Below is in your graveyard, remove Bridge from Below from the game. This card is awesome because we have tons of ways to kill our own creatures with cards like uh, Cabal Therapy, which to flashback we have to sacrifice a creature. And also Dread Return, which to flashback we have to sacrifice three creatures. And most of the time, we'll have two or three Bridge from Below in the graveyard. Sometimes even four, if we mill our entire deck with Balustrade Spy, this card right here. I'm going to talk about very soon. So let's say we sacrifice three creatures, and we have four bridges in our graveyard. Well, that's 12 zombies. <laughs> that's uh, pretty good. Another new addition to this deck is Creeping Chill. I'm playing four copies. This helps us win without doing our actual combo, because yes... This deck is not just a creature-based dredge deck, it's actually a combo deck, uh, which is the main difference between this and regular dredge decks, and I'm going to explain the combo very soon. Uh, Creeping Chill deals 3 damage to each opponent and you gain 3 life for 4 mana, but we're never going to cast it, obviously, we don't have any mana. But when it's put into your graveyard from your library, you make Zalit. If you do, it deals 3 damage to each opponent and you gain 3 life. So, with all the dredging we're going to do, and uh, all the, um, uh, the Ballast Trade Spy... Uh, that's going to mill our entire deck. Uh, Creeping Chill, throughout the course of the game, will probably deal 12 damage to the opponent, since we have 4 copies of it. And pair that with a couple of attacks from Ikaria, Nether Shadow, and Praz Amalgam, that should be enough to win the game. Um, that's if we don't win with our combo. I have uh, 4 copies of Narc Amoeba. This is another card that um, rewards us from uh, dredging so much. Let's say we dredge 5 and we find Narc Amoeba, Prize Amalgam and Icarid. Narc Amoeba will come into play directly uh, because when it's put into your graveyard from your library, it goes on the battlefield. Then it will trigger the Prize Amalgam to come back at the end step. And on the next upkeep, Icarid will come back on the battlefield with haste. So four copies of that. Next on the roster is also a new card, four copies of Grief. This is one of the best things that has happened to this deck because it really helps us uh, beating hate cards game one or even game two because we now have access to a black creature that can be exiled to Icarid, obviously that um, can be cast for free and that makes us uh, have a thought seize like effect and pair that with four copies of cabal therapy we have a lot of good options to get rid of stuff like force of will surgical extraction or other hate cards like rest in peace uh, before you even have a chance to come on the battlefield since we can do this as soon as turn one but I don't recommend it doing on turn 1 because you want to maintain 7 cards in your hand so that you can draw a card and then discard to hand size and start the loop going. Uh, this is 4 mana for 3-2 with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. But it has evoke. Exile a black card from your hand. So you can cast it for free by exiling a black card. And it will be sacrificed uh, upon entering the battlefield. What's good about this is obviously you don't have to spend mana on it. But it's a card that can be cast for free with, let's say you dredge a Stinkweed Imp or a Golgari Thug. It will come back from your graveyard to your hand. So now you can exile that card to Grief once you have enough dredgers in the graveyard. And then you'll have that Grief to exile to Icarid. And uh, it's a good discard spell. So four copies of that. Just know that this increases the price of this deck significantly because Manaless Dredge normally can be built for around $150 uh, for a very entry level version. But this card, uh, the four copies, is about, I would say, 80 bucks for the full playset. And also, in the sideboard is now pretty expensive. But you can definitely build this deck for about 150 by uh, cutting a few cards. It will still be just as, far, as powerful game one. But games two and three, you're going to struggle a little bit more. Another discard spell is four copies of Cabal Therapy. One black, name an online card, target player reveals his or her hand, and discards from it all cards with that name, and flashback, sacrifice a creature. Uh, we do this uh, so that we can mill it with our uh, dredgers. And then we can cast it by sacrificing another Shadow Icarid, Prize Amalgam. Uh, one thing I like to do is uh, bring back Icarid, attack with Icarid, and after the attack step in the second main phase, Cabal Therapy, sacrificing the Icarid, because we will have to sacrifice it at the end step anyway. Generate zombies with Bridge from below. And name something from the opponent's hand. Normally it's Force of Will. 
because we hate it when the opponent forces our dread return. Imagine sacrificing three creatures just to get your dread return forced. Uh, next up, we have four copies of Street Wraith. This is another black creature that can be exiled to Icarid that doesn't do much in the graveyard. Well, as a matter of fact, it does nothing. Uh, same thing with Grief. Uh, we just care about it to cycle it by paying two life. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that dredges are replacement effects for any draw. So it's not necessarily a draw step, it's also draws from Street Wraith. So this allows us to dredge multiple times in a single turn, which is really powerful. Because let's say on turn one, you draw your card, you're on the draw, uh, you discard Phantasmagorian to hand size, and then you activate it twice, discard a bunch of dredgers and prize amalgams and stuff that comes back. Then you draw your uh, your card for your um, for your draw step, and you replace it with a dredge to dredge even more. And then you Street Wraith, replace that draw by another dredge, and now your graveyard is full. And you bring back a ton of stuff, and then you can simply dread return to bring back Balustrade Spy and win the game. And I'm going to explain that combo right now. So Balustrade Spy, 4 mana for 2-3 with flying, but we don't really care. Uh, what we care about is when it enters the battlefield, Target player reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a land card and puts those cards into his or her graveyard. And guess what? You have no land, so it might as well be mill your entire deck or dredge your entire deck. Uh, so, you guess what? When we mill our entire deck, all the creeping chills are going to trigger, all the narc amoebas are going to trigger, we're going to have a bunch of creatures on the battlefield, and then we can dread return, um, flashback, sacrifice three creatures, so we'll cast it from the graveyard by sacrificing three creatures, triggering all the bridge from below, return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and the card we're going to bring back is our one of Tassa's Oracle. Tassa's Oracle, blue blue for our 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Devotion to blue is probably going to be like uh, around 3 to 5. A maximum devotion to blue we could have is 4 plus 2, so 6. But most of the time, by the time we combo off, there might be one Narcomoeba uh, we dredge that died or something like this. So let's say we had three Narcomoebas and one Tassa's Oracle. So that's 5 Devotion, uh, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so why did I explain all this? But when it enters the battlefield, look at top X cards of your library where X is your Devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So we cast this, we have no cards in our library, and we just win. Even if the opponent has a removal spell in response to the trigger, our Devotion will be blue. The trig, uh, will be zero. Our devotion to blue will be zero. The trigger will still resolve, and we have zero cards in our deck, so the devotion is equal to the number of cards in our deck. So we still win. Uh, so we don't even care about removal in this situation. But that's it for the main deck. Uh, personally, I think this deck is a lot of fun to play. It's incredibly powerful. Game one, the win rate for this on game one has to be over seventy percent. But in games two and three, it has to be under thirty percent <laughs> because it's so weak. The graveyard hate. It doesn't even have mana to deal with Graveyard Hate Permanence or uh, to counter some Force of Wills or whatever. But the addition of Grief and also paired that with Cabal Therapy um, gives the deck a little bit more interaction and a little bit more play against those type of Hate cards. Okay, now let's get into the sideboard. First of all, we have one copy of Fairy Macabre because um, let's say we play against Storm and they're playing uh, Past and Flames. We can do that to slow them down a little bit so that we can win. Uh, because we're not going to be able to win on turn 1 with this deck. This is a turn 2 deck uh, at best. Most of the time it wins on turn 3 uh, if it goes unanswered. But it's incredibly resilient. I mean, when it comes to removal or counter spells, uh, <laughs> this deck is incredibly resilient. But when it comes to Graveyard Hate though, it might be another story. <laughs> uh, we just have one copy of Fairy Macabre in the sideboard. Because we're so fast and consistent and powerful that... We mostly care about stopping opponents from stopping us. Not stopping opponents from doing their thing, because we're probably doing something more powerful. Next up is 4 copies of Chancellor of the Annex. Which is a 5-6 creature for 7. Uh, another card you can bring back with uh, Dread Return. Uh, if you were playing against a combo deck, that could uh, win the game on the spot. It's uh, flying, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, counter that it unless that player pays 1. But uh, what we care about the most is you may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do when each opponent casts his or her first spell of the game, counter that spell as that player pays one. This might not seem like much, but it might as well be a free time walk in most matchups. 
So we're boarding this thing, boarding this in against Delver decks or decks that can interact with us early to prevent them from thought seizing us turn one, uh, so that uh, we cannot discard the hand size on our turn, and uh, also bring it back wins the game immediately. I also have two copies of Sickening Shoal to deal with creatures like uh, Containment Priest, and uh, well, we cannot deal with Talia because we cannot even cast it. Uh, next up. Four copies of Force of Will. This is to deal with Force of Will and also other uh, spells that uh, deal well. Almost anything like Rest in Peace, Thalia, we can just um, counter it before it even comes on the battlefield. We don't have that many blue cards to exile. Only four Prize Amalgam, one Thassa's Oracle and four Narc Amoebas. And also itself, but it's just so good that we still play four in the sideboard. Last but not least is four copies of Force of Vigor. This is to deal with artifacts and enchantments like Rest in Peace and uh, Chalice of the Void. Other um, Chalice is not that great against us, but it still counters Cabal Therapy. But we're still board in for Force of Vigor, even though we don't have that many green cards. We can still dredge back our Golgari Grave Troll and Shambling Shell, and then exile them with Force of Vigor. Uh, because even if we don't have them in the opening hand, we're still going to dredge them over the course of the game. Then we can bring it back to our hand and exile them to Force of Vigor. So that's it for Legacy Mana Less Dredge. Let me know in the comments what you think about this deck. Do you think it's better than LED Dredge or other combo decks in the format? I'd love to know and I'll talk to you guys later.